More than 21 states are also seeing surges in cases and hospitalizations this month after reopening their economies. Are there lessons to be learned? Different. One of the issues which has been raised in recent years has been about testing. Now, Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister's question, is saying that uh, the government is prioritising testing for the coronavirus and is the biggest threat this country has faced for decades. And this country is not alone. All the market over the world has been affected by coronavirus and a key benchmark for global markets. As far as the virus is concerned, here is the... The last few months have been tough. Most of us have had to change the way we work, imprisoned by our own four walls, locked down. But the fog is beginning to lift and some of our freedoms have begun to return. And one freedom that I didn't know how much I missed was being here, behind the wheel, just me, the car, the road, no thoughts, no baggage, just miles and miles of tarmac and freedom. Right now, I can't think of a better car to escape in than this. This is the Ferrari 812 Superfast, the top of the Ferrari food chain. It's the successor to the F12, a two-seater Grand Tourer that delivers outrageous speed over long distances. A car designed to help you escape from the mundane, from new and old realities, to embark on journeys where spectacular becomes the norm. <laughs> of the show is of course that engine a naturally aspirated v12 monster one of the last of a dying breed six and a half liters of fury no following the herd here no turbos no superchargers just petrol and ambient air being turned into flames and those flames into power the power is just outrageous it makes 800 metric horsepower hence the name and yeah, before you ask, it is super fast. <laughs> it will do 0 to 62 in 2.9 seconds, 211 miles an hour flat out. So it starts strong and it finishes strong, but it's the bit in the middle that's most impressive. The engine makes 718 newton meters of torque, around 7,000 RPM. But that number is kind of meaningless because it feels strong absolutely everywhere <laughs> it's stepping out in a straight line it's like wrestling a red shark i'll tell you what this drive was meant to be an escape but i've got to escape from the escape i'm tapping out for a minute <laughs> it's just relentless it's not just the way this car drives that is a diversion its design is also a huge departure from the mundane it follows the same formula as previous Ferrari Berlinettas, sharing a resemblance with its predecessor, the F12. But drink in the details, and there are plenty of them. The way the front lights are integrated into the design of the vents on the bonnet, the sculpted sides that suck high-pressure air from the wheel arches, channeling it along the doors, the suspended splitter that increases the diffuser surface, working like the wing of a biplane, the subtle spoiler, and that long, almost never-ending bonnet. In fact, it's mostly bonnet, isn't it? There's so much bonnet, in fact, that they've actually added a darker section towards the windscreen to try and disguise just how long it is. And then there's a the steering wheel. Look how much distance there is between the steering wheel and the number plate. You basically sit in the back of the car. 
Now, if you're thinking that the engine lives towards the front of the car, then you'd be mistaken because technically, this is a front mid-engine car. And just look at it, almost like a human heart with veins and arteries sending life-giving power via a seven-speed gearbox to the rear wheels. You could lift it out of the engine bay, mount it on any wall in any contemporary art gallery in the world, and it wouldn't look out of place. There's a famous quote, actually. Enzo Ferrari once said that when you buy a Ferrari, you pay for the engine and he throws in the rest for free. If that's true, then that's your 300 grand right there. The cabin is maybe less exotic, but feels special all the same. Minimalist, racy, stylish. The steering wheel is a tactile delight with hard, cold carbon fiber at the top and bottom with integrated shift lights and leather at the sides. The thing is literally covered in buttons as well. There are no stalks here at all. There's buttons for your indicator, buttons for your lights, suspension, engine start, voice control, phone. There's a little scroll wheel for your windscreen wipers. And then the most famous Ferrari switch of all, the Manatino, which lets you cycle through the various driving modes. There's wet, essential for bits of today, sport, race, CT off, and then RIP. And what's cool is that even though it is very driver focused and makes you feel like an F1 driver, they haven't neglected the passenger because over here in the passenger compartment, you have a separate screen that shows whoever you're riding shotgun with, how many Gs you're pulling, how many revs the engine's doing. And then on top of that, you've got the coolest glove box noise ever. Listen to this. It's so beautiful, unnecessary, but beautiful. And then there are mod cons like Apple CarPlay, there's a pair of USB ports, a cup holder. It's just a really nice place to spend time. I suppose we shouldn't be that surprised. This car is a GT. When we talk about escaping, that's exactly what this car was built for, to travel long distances in comfort. And in that respect, the 812 Superfast is actually reasonably good, but it's not quite perfect. There are a couple of problems. First and foremost, it's just not that refined when you're cruising. The engine revs too high on the motorway. The suspension's a little bit on the hard side. The gearbox is a little bit clunky around town. There's too much tire noise. And even though it has quite a large fuel tank, around 90-ish liters, don't expect that petrol to last very long. But we can disregard its failings as a GT because as a supercar, the super fast is phenomenal. I really can't understate just how stupendous this engine is. You plant your foot and the thing just spins up immediately. Lights on the steering wheel flashing like a Christmas tree. It eggs you on. It is absolutely addictive. It's a drug. There is no point whatsoever where you need full throttle in this car because you just won't find a road big enough, straight enough or legal enough. It steers well too. The wheel feels overly responsive at times, in part due to the all-wheel steering system giving it the feeling of an extremely short wheelbase. It means the 812 has a somewhat violent direction change. Measured, calculated inputs get the best from this car. I mentioned the firm suspension earlier, and that's one of the key things that means you've got to be really, really on your toes at all times in this car. It causes you to lose and then regain traction so quickly. At one point, you could have all the grip in the world, all the traction in the world, and then that suspension will just lift. <laughs> and suddenly your wheels start spinning. You've got to be on top of your game at all times in this car. That's what I love about big V12 Ferraris. They're wild, untamed. You're not the boss. You're a fleshy cog in the machine. By all means, yeah, play your part, but the machine's gonna do what the machine is gonna do. The internal combustion engine has got so many flaws. It's on its way out, of course, we know that. But when we look back, history is gonna show that this is the engine that made the last stand, that didn't wanna give up that wanted to hang on for one last run. This is the engine that knew it was going out, but this is the engine that's going out with a bang.
Even if this is the last we see of an engine like this, we should cherish it. Just like we should cherish all the good times. These things we take for granted might not be around forever, so it's important that we cherish and appreciate every special moment. A lot of us use driving as a diversion, a way to escape our problems. And yet, even on those drives, our problems still find a way to creep back into our heads, you know? Your bank balance, your wife, your mortgage, your tax man. But not in this. With the 812 super fast, you've got to give this car every ounce of your cerebral capacity. This is a car that you drive and completely forget the outside world. This is a car where nothing else matters. This is a car where the only thing that's important is you, the road, and the miles and miles of freedom.